Talk about a drought. I believe all the water is drying up. So normally, we're in about two foot of water right here. So we know the water's down about two foot. According to our Lakeview app, the water's down about four feet. So it's actually not very common to see our lake this low. However, this time of the year in the winter, the local power company will drain the lake for whatever reason. <clears throat> in this case, they've actually drained it to preserve water on the lakes that's south of us or below this lake because we are going through a drought right now. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, I do want to apologize about my voice. I've got kind of a cold right now. It's middle of the winter time. It's freezing cold outside. And <clears throat> I want to show you something really neat. I'm standing in about eight foot of water. Probably can't really tell that, but I am. Normally this lake, it's about eight foot deep where I am right now. And if we look back here at the marina or the dive shop, you'll notice the water's drained down and all the bedrock's exposed. And I'll give you a quick little history lesson about what this uh, point is and what we used to call it and why we called it that. But I wanna talk about what happens when the water comes back up <clears throat> and how it applies to you as a diver. First of all, what I'm standing on is the point here is actually called Taylorsville Beach. And even our marina, the Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina, it used to be called Taylorsville Beach. And that's because way back when, none of this existed. All this was sand, okay? And if you don't know much about our facility, this has been in our family for many, many years. Uh, dates back to even before the dam was built over here. And after the dam was built, water came up and all this was sand. All right, so it went from farmland to sand. And people used to call it the Taylorsville Beach because you could literally drive out here. You could lay in the sand. You could wade in the water. And it was kind of like a beach in a lake, if you will. <clears throat> Unfortunately, over the years, a bunch of erosion happened. And all that sand washed away and it eroded down to the bedrock. Now, like I said, at normal water levels, this water roughly where I'm standing here is about eight foot deep. Water up there is somewhere between say three and four foot deep. But every year, Duke Pyre or the local pyre company here, they'll actually drain the lake. And there's a multitude of reasons why. For one, over here at the dam, if they've got a commercial crew over there working, they'll drain it so that they're gonna have a little bit better visibility, which we're gonna come back to. Number two, if we're in a drought like we are now, then what Duke Pyre will do is they'll drain water out of this dam into the lakes below this lake, and that way they have an adequate amount of um, water supply. <clears throat> and a cool little fun fact for you, the way lakes work, or at least the way this lake works, this is a private lake in the sense that Duke Pyre owns it. It is a public lake, which means anybody in the public is free to use it for whatever, fishing, diving, boating, sports, whatever. But yet it's still a federal reservoir, which means local cities use the water out of the lake for city use, for whatever. Um, whatever it's water treatment plants, things like that. So it is well regulated as far as depth goes. And there's a certain depth that they can't go below. I think right now our lake's in the 95 foot mark, which means the deepest part's only 95 feet. Full pond's around 100 feet. And of course, averages around seven. So the lake's down quite a bit. However... Let's talk about what happens when the water comes back up. Right now, as water is draining through the dam, all this turbidity is washing downstream. And even though, yeah, it looks nice and clear here, shallow, when you get down about 10, 15 foot, we lose all visibility. So it's just gonna get super dark. But as they shut off that flow of the water and they allow it to start filling back up, all that turbidity settles. And we get extremely crystal clear conditions. Now understand crystal clear conditions to us is about 15, maybe 20 foot on a good day uh, visibility, which is still phenomenal for us. And that's 
to us, that's like the best of the best for this lake. <clears throat> but what that does is it also, it refreshes the nutrients in the water because it's pulling more water out of the mountains down here. It's good for the fish. It's good for the wildlife. And it simply refreshes them. And as a diver, right now being in the wintertime, if you don't have a dry suit, if you don't have a really thick uh, wetsuit of some type, then you're not going to be able to go diving unless, of course, you can afford to go to the tropics. But as that water comes back up, as spring starts working around, then, of course, it's going to refresh you as a diver because it's going to give you clear visibility to go out there and dive and practice your skills. Well, how does this apply right now during the drought? What can you do during the drought if the visibility is going to be bad and you can't dive? Well, you can go out and do a refresher at your local pool. What you should be doing this time of the year, if you're not fortunate enough to go dive, is get up with your local dive shops. See what nights they allow people to come to the pool who are not taking classes to simply practice your skills because you never want those skills to go away. These skills should be second nature to you. It doesn't matter your level. You can be an open water diver. You can be a rescue diver. You can be a technical diver. You can be an instructor. You can be an instructor trainer. You never want your skills to go away. And the more that we can practice them, the better of a diver that we're going to become. And it doesn't matter what the skill is, whether you want to practice taking your mask on and off, practicing navigation skills, whatever it is, get out there and practice it. And unfortunately, yeah, we got a nice, pretty sunny day, but it's cold out. It's like in the 20s today. And if you can't get out and dive for whatever reason, whether it's finances, whether it is... Um, you just don't have a, a dry suit or a thick wet suit where you can't afford to go on a trip or the current conditions are not suitable to dive, go to your local pool. Go, go get in with your local dive shop at their pool and practice your skills. We have divers from all over come to our pool. They practice. They don't even have to be divers we train. They don't even have to be customers of ours. All they do is pay the entry fee. They get in and they can practice any skill that they want to practice. So that's pretty much the point of this video. I want to give you a little history lesson of the lake. While we're such low uh, conditions or uh, low depth conditions right now and how it applies to you as a diver. As this water comes up, it's going to refresh this waterway just like you. If you're the type of diver that unfortunately can't dive in the wintertime, you need to get refreshed. Go to your pools, practice, even take a refresher course. Doesn't matter if it's a scuba refresh, if it's a scuba skills update or whatever training agency you train through, get out there and practice these skills. And who knows, you may stay refreshed throughout the winter months to where when it comes springtime, you're hot and ready to go and you're just gonna be a much safer diver for it. But guys, that's gonna be today's video. I really hope you understood the message there. Hey, if you want to come check out Lake Hickory, come check us out. I'll take you out on a private guided tour. We've got over 100 different dive sites here in the lake. Pretty much all of them we've mapped. And we will even share those maps with you guys if you swing by. And that way, if you got your own boat and you want to go out and explore the area, you're more than welcome to do so. But guys, that's going to be it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you enjoyed the history lesson here. Hope you learned to learn learned a little bit about how lakes work and things like that but if you did give me a big thumbs up drop me a comment down below if you got any questions and uh, that's going to be it for today but until our next video take care god bless and i'll see you in the next one